Hello. Getting live on all the platforms. Bear with me just one moment. Hello, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. We're live everywhere. I think you can all see me now. So this time is a little bit different than our normal streaming time. Uh, we tried to do another time uh, to give other people the opportunity to join us. And we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, today is just going to be a general question and answer session about living in the city in Korea. So feel free to leave your questions on any of our various platforms, Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, and we'll get to you. And uh, thank you to everyone that's joined on Instagram. Hello, everybody. To start off, I'll just go with some updates first. Hello. So regarding updates, we have a couple important things to announce. Uh, the first one is the streaming schedule for the rest of the month. Uh, we will have a live stream in Spanish actually uh, next week on Monday, May 11th at 5 p.m. Korean time. So be sure to check out that, especially if you're a Spanish speaker. And then the week after that on Monday, May 17th, we will have another live stream back at Hanyang University, but with their Korean language school staff, as opposed to the uh, visiting program staff. And that will be on Monday, May 17th at 10.30 a.m. Korean time. So be sure to tune into that. If you do happen to miss it, you can always check out the replay on YouTube or Facebook. Um, Normally we have them updated on YouTube uh, the same day. So if you do miss it, you can check it out. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us from France. And a uh, general update about what's going on in Korea. Uh, the government has announced that they're easing their social distancing, which is uh, great news. So as of May 6th, it'll be kind of more relaxed. Um, it's not been that strict actually in Korea. There's been no lockdown um, in Seoul and in other parts of the country, it's been uh, a little bit more strict depending where you are. But other than that, uh, it's been pretty well um, and the social distancing will continue to ease. And the government also said that they'll allow businesses to resume their activities and some events and such, as long as they adhere to the proper uh, guidelines for disinfection and distancing as uh, deemed by the government. So it's a great step in the right direction with the continued uh, struggle that many countries are having with the pandemic going on. So if you are planning on coming to Korea, uh, the situation is is getting a lot better and, and is a lot better now. Uh, so, Great news on that front. Hello, everybody that just joined on Instagram. And hello on YouTube. Oh, it's very early in the morning. Thanks for joining so early in the morning. If you want to join the Spanish speaking live stream, that'll be next week. So I hope you'll still be able to stay awake for that one too. And uh, right now, most of the cases of COVID-19 are being imported to Korea. So that is from people traveling outside uh, of Korea into the country. So um, as that's still going on, uh, Korea still has some quarantine rules in effect, but uh, we estimate that that will probably be reevaluated this month, depending on how many imported cases they continue to get. Um, it's only been like a couple per day, but there are still imported cases being um, introduced to the country. Uh, second thing to announce are the upcoming deadlines. Uh, today is actually the deadline for Dongguk University. They're still accepting students for the summer term. So if you'd like to start there during the summer, 
then please be sure to email everything by today. Otherwise, we're accepting the documents for the fall for our other language schools. So if you'd like to attend our other language schools in Seoul or Busan or Daegu, you can be sure to send those documents as soon as possible. Uh, the deadlines aren't until the summer, like June or July, so you still have time, but uh, better soon, sooner than later. Hello, everyone that just joined on Instagram. Talking about living and studying in Korea, answering all your questions. Today is just a general Q&A. Uh, feel free to ask any questions about our schools or studying in Korea or life in Korea as it is. And also, if you're interested in our study trips, our study trips are still open. Uh, we have some deadlines coming up for those as well for the uh, youth trips, they're May 10th. And then for the other remaining trips for the August one, it's June 30th is the deadline. And for the autumn trip, it is August 9th. So be sure to visit studytrip.com and complete your application soon, pay your application fee and We'll get you all set. In terms of traveling to Korea, you can still travel to Korea. Uh, I know some other countries have some travel restrictions, but uh, in terms of Korea, uh, still a lot of countries are welcome here. There are some that are uh, restricted due to those countries restricting, restricting Koreans traveling to their country. But uh, if you have any questions about that, then just let us know and we can help you figure out what the travel situation would be for your country coming to Korea. There is one question from Pear Juice. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, how does the working holiday visa work? Um, so certain countries have a working holiday agreement uh, with Korea. So you have to be one of those countries. And then the length of time that you receive for the working holiday visa uh, varies depending on your nationality. So if your country has an agreement with Korea for the working holiday visa, you can of course apply to it and then you're free to study if you wish. And then you can also work part-time. There are some requirements for the visa. So um, they vary maybe slightly depending on your nationality. So I would check with your local Korean embassy uh, if you have any general questions, then uh, just let us know. Uh, another question, thank you, hey, it me, Shari, for the question. Uh, would I be able to work part-time on the student visa? Uh, the student visa is different from the working holiday visa. So uh, yes, you can work on the student visa, but you have to wait uh, till six months uh, after you start studying. So you'd study for six months, then you'd qualify to work part-time. And there are a couple other requirements for working part-time if you're on a student visa. And we can uh, answer those questions for you if you just contact us. Uh, basically, it depends on your Korean language proficiency. And also you have to have a really good attendance rate at language school, something like 90% or above. So it's very important that you attend class if you want to later work on the student visa. And then you're permitted to work part-time and your hours are kind of limited depending on your proficiency in Korean. Okay, great. So I'll get back to you, answer any other questions you may have. If you've already filled the contact form, for those of you that don't know, our contact form is on our homepage. It's www.gogohanguk.com. And then if you scroll all the way down, you can find the contact form. If uh, you're an English speaker, I'll get back to you. And we also support Spanish and Italian. So Christina can help you in Spanish and Sabrina will help you in Italian. And then for everyone else, I'll help you as best I can. If uh, English isn't your first language, uh, then as long as you can uh, communicate back and forth with me and fill out the forms, then it's no problem. Uh, we can work on it together. And thank you for joining us on YouTube. I see 
Still our one comment from the person in Mexico up very late. Thanks for joining us. And if you're on Facebook as well, uh, feel free to leave any questions or comments there. Thanks again for joining us on Instagram, answering all your questions about living and studying in Korea. Uh, be sure to uh, fill out the contact form or email us if you have any more detailed questions from this q and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, otherwise, uh, just chatting generally about living and studying in Korea. We support many Korean language schools in Seoul and Busan and Daegu. And also our newest program is a visiting program for current undergraduate students at Hanyang University called the Hanyang University Visiting Program. So if you're a current undergraduate student, you can basically take a semester abroad at Hanyang. You can study in the university courses, degree seeking courses, and uh, it's quite easy to apply, just a couple forms and a couple documents, and then you're good to go. You can study for one term, one semester, or even two semesters. Uh, you can extend your study period if you'd like. If you'd like to get credit for the courses, you can get that too. I would just double check with your home institution on what the requirements would be. And we can, of course, help you uh, get the documentation you would need to get credit for the courses at Hanyang. And similarly with the Korean language courses, uh, if you decide to study full time as a Korean language student and you'd like to receive credit for studying Korean language, uh, most universities don't require that much. They may just require something like a schedule and when you're tested and a, a syllabus maybe and things like that. So some undergraduate and graduate students would like to receive credit for the full time Korean language classes. So um, that's, that's a possibility as uh, long as you let us know what documentation you need. Most of the time, it's just asking your uh, counselor in the university or your academic um, coordinator or a counselor and they can help you out. Your academic advisor may be any of those names. Thanks for just joining us and feel free to leave a question or comment. Uh, the weather has gotten really, really warm in Korea. It's basically summer now. Like when I was walking to the office, I was almost sweating because it was uh, pretty warm outside. I think it's like in the mid 70s in Fahrenheit. Uh, in Celsius, it's in the low 20s, I think today, but we'll get up until the mid to high 20s in Celsius later. Hello, Pear Juice again. With the working holiday visa, can I apply for more than one part-time job. Um, you're limited on the hours you can work. So uh, if you have one job and you don't end up working a lot of hours, I believe you could have two um, jobs in agreement, of course, with your other workplace. You're welcome. Uh, what, another question, uh, what qualification do you gain after the course? Uh, if you're talking about the Korean language course. For every level you finish, you'll receive a certificate saying, you know, you got these grades and finished this level. So let's say you study for two terms and you start at level one, then you would receive one after you pass level one, and then you receive another certificate after you pass level two. And it's 200 hours of instruction, and that's like uh, classroom time. So Many university courses, like a one semester foreign language course may not actually uh, be that many hours. So you, you might actually end up studying more than a university undergraduate course in the, the term here at language school. And there are four terms throughout the year, except for Chile University because their terms are basically double length. Um, but otherwise, four terms per year, spring, summer, fall, winter, and then if you pass the level, then you'll get a certificate and you automatically go on to the next level. Uh, some students need to repeat levels and that's perfectly okay. Uh, many students do. Uh, you're very welcome. Let's, I think I missed a question here. I think, oops. Hello, hello, for those that just joined. So yeah, if you study in the Korean language course, then of then as you pass the levels, you'll get a certificate saying you finished. Uh, for the undergraduate uh, 
courses at Hanyang, if you're talking about the Hanyang Visiting Program, uh, then you'll receive a transcript, of course, with your grades and what courses you took. And then if you need any other documentation to receive credit, then you can just ask us for the information. And yeah, I would talk with your academic advisor about what you would need. I would think most of the time it's pretty easy documentation. Again, they may need something like a syllabus, a schedule, um, when you're tested, like how you're tested, you know, do you have a midterm, do you have a final exam, do you have homework, do you have labs, do you, you know, depending on the course, maybe you uh, have a lab section you attend or you have some other, uh, something outside of lecture. So just let us know and we will get back to you with whatever documentation you may need. For those of you who don't know, my name is Nathan. I'm the International Student Coordinator for Google Hanguk. We're doing a live Q&A all about living and studying in Korea. And we just received another question. Thanks again, Pear Juice. Uh, yes, so if you'd like to uh, start at a higher level than the beginning, you can of course take a placement test. Uh, the placement test is open to everybody. Uh, especially if you've had experience with Korean before, then you can take the placement test and see where you land. And if you're a true beginner, then don't worry about the placement test. You can start from the very beginning at level one. However, uh, if you have studied really any Korean, I recommend taking the placement test, even if you're uh, still maybe just familiarizing yourself with the alphabet or know like basic readings and such. Um, it's much, uh, easier, I think, to give yourself kind of a, a self-assessment as well if you take the placement test. And the school's placement tests um, are kind of uh, proprietary. So many people do ask like, what's on the placement test? What should I prepare for? Um, it's not really something that you need to prepare for. It's something you should bring your, your current skills to and, and see uh, how you're assessed and of course, if you're placed into a class that's too easy or too hard for you, you can talk to the teacher uh, once you start the term and figure out where you need to go up or down or, or stay where you are. Yeah, if you've, if you've taken any language courses before uh, at any level, then I recommend taking the placement test to see how you would do if you decide to join the course at our language school partners. Uh, most of them just generally, most of them do something like, uh, you know, reading or writing assessment. Um, they may also have you do like a short interview with a teacher to see how your speaking is. So whatever level you are, um, you can, of course, brush up on what you know, but I wouldn't explicitly prepare for the placement test since it's supposed to kind of assess where you should start. And you may know Part of the level where you start, uh, most most people do, uh, but probably the vast majority um, either don't know the whole level or they they will learn a lot more from you know being in Korea, being in, in that level uh, after the placement test. And as I mentioned, if it really is too hard for you or too easy for you, you can uh, go up or down with consultation with your teacher and the language school staff. They can help you figure out what would be best for you. Um, if you're thinking about going to Lexus Korea, you can actually start any Monday. So it's uh, open, kind of open rolling admission. Uh, they accept new students to start every Monday. So let's say you want to start next year. Uh, I would apply a couple months before you'd like to start. So probably two to three months before would be fine. Uh, sooner the better though, since it's always open to apply. Uh, if you're having trouble planned due to the pandemic or anything else, um, that's fine. You can submit an application if you need to change your dates later. Uh, completely understand. Uh, question over on YouTube. Uh, yeah, someone asked, is asking about uh, Hanyang University. And yes, Hanyang is, is known as an engineering school. In terms of 
if the classes are offered in English or Korean, I think it will depend on the course. Uh, I, I'm not specifically sure as I don't have the course catalog in front of me, um, but if you're interested in a certain field of engineering, uh, if you contact us, uh, we can we can check. Um, I myself was an electrical engineer, uh, but if you have a specific course you're looking at taking, or if you want to uh, do a specific field, then uh, just let us let us know, and we can check on the courses for you. Uh, some, at least. Um, from what I've seen, some uh, majors are more taught in like English rather than Korean um, compared compared to others, uh, just due to the curriculum or the terminology is is more recognized as uh, given in English than any other language. So um, maybe depending on what field of engineering you're talking about, that might be the case. But we can double check for you. Thanks for the question, Daniel. Uh, yes, glad I answered your question about Lexus Korea. Please do join Lexus Korea if you are interested. And if you have any other questions, be sure to contact us. Let's see. Hello, more people joining on Instagram. Thank you for joining us. If you have any other questions about our partner schools or about the programs they offer, then just let me know. Let's see, oh, glad someone recommended Google Hangup to you. Uh, as, as long as you can uh, reply back and forth with email and fill out the forms for the application, it's, it's okay if your English isn't perfect. Um, I'm more than happy to help you with the application process and you know, we can figure it out together. If you have any questions about the documents you need or the application forms themselves, just let me know. Hello, more people on Instagram. Thanks for joining. Uh, you're welcome, Daniel. Uh, for the visiting program, uh, another question about Hanyang's visiting program. Uh, currently, the course, the visiting program is for, is for undergrad. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, they would open it to graduate students as well, since graduate school app, um, admission is a, normally a more involved process. But um, if you are going to graduate soon with your undergrad and, and are looking to take graduate school courses, then um, maybe contact me with a little bit more information. Um, they may they might have another program depending on what your field is. Um, you know, maybe you can do. Uh, another type of abroad, study abroad, semester abroad, or fellowship or something like that. So um, just let us know a little bit more detail about your situation and we can, we can check that out for you. Thanks for your question. And for those that just joined on Instagram, if you have any questions about living and studying in Korea, please let me know if you have any questions about our partner schools, about accommodation, about the visiting program at Hanyang, then I'm more than happy to answer you live right now. You're very welcome, Daniel. Thanks for the questions. And also, if you happen to think of something later, again, you can leave a comment on YouTube or Facebook. Um, that's where you can find the replay. As many of you know, the live videos on Instagram disappear after a while. So you can find the replay on YouTube and you can find the replay on Facebook. And you can of course email us anytime. I recommend using the contact form on our homepage. Uh, question, yes, we do help with accommodation. Um, we help with a couple different kinds of accommodation. Most of our language schools have a dormitory or we can also help you with some off-campus housing options. Um, on our website, there's a web page for accommodation specifically, uh, but if you have more specific questions about like the cost or the budget and uh, things like that, then you can just let me know. Most people 
probably stay in the dormitory or mini studio as well. Some people decide to stay in a share house. Uh, share house, you can live with Korean residents as well as other international residents. Uh, some people opt for a homestay or want to do a homestay for maybe a, a week or a month and then switch their accommodation. And a homestay is with a Korean host family. Another question over on YouTube. Uh, how's the search for housing, especially off campus? Uh, as I mentioned, we can help you with a couple different types uh, for accommodation. Uh, if you wanted something like your own apartment, then that's a little bit more uh, involved. And um, actually, especially in Seoul, they require a fairly large deposit. So some people may start in like a, a more affordable accommodation or something like uh, a share house, or they may try a homestay for a little bit while they're looking for their own apartment. Uh, just because it can take a while to find something that's, uh, you know, fits you <clears throat> and fits your lifestyle or fits your schedule uh, or fits where you want to live. Some people really want to live in a certain part of town or they want to live in a more quiet area. So, uh, yeah, many people might start with something temporary and move to more uh, permanent accommodations later. Uh, if you have more questions about that, then just let me know. Um, Again, like Seoul is probably the more expensive area to live. If you study in like Busan or Daegu, it's slightly uh, more affordable. Uh, you're very welcome. I'll get back to you if I haven't already. Um, I've been uh, going through everyone's emails uh, this morning and I, I just, uh, stop for a minute to do this live stream. So if you emailed me within maybe the, or sent our contact form within the past hour, I, I may not have gotten to it yet, but I will definitely get back to you within, uh, normally within 24 hours. Um, there are some holidays during uh, this week. So uh, we try to get back to everyone within one to three business days. Uh, however, if it's not the weekend and it's not a holiday, then I can normally get back to you within 24 hours. Um, I know there's a big time difference normally between where we are in Korea and where you are. So uh, thanks for your understanding in advance with the time difference. Uh, otherwise, I'm um, normally pretty quick about it. And also, uh, yeah, feel free to leave a comment or question on the videos afterwards. We'll definitely read those comments and get back to you either uh, you know, reply directly back to the comment, or maybe we'll post something on our social media if it's something we get, or a question we get uh, really commonly. Hello, hello for those that joined Instagram. I'm Nathan. I'm the International Student Coordinator for Google Hanguk. If you're just joining us, feel free to leave your questions about living and studying in Korea. We partner with many different language schools all over Korea. And our newest program is at Hanyang University for their visiting program, which is like a study abroad for current undergraduate students. And I see more people on YouTube as well. Hello, hello. And if you're on Facebook, hello to you as well. Sorry, I'm not always looking over here, but feel free to join us on Instagram or YouTube as well if one of the platforms isn't working very well. I think all of them are connected well now though. We've been going for about uh, 30 minutes now. We normally run our live stream for about 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, we've been doing them regularly in April and May. As we all are aware, there's uh, the global pandemic situation. So, uh, we want to keep you up to date and well informed about when you are able to travel again. We'd, we'd love for you to come join us here in Korea, study some Korean. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the weather has gotten really warm recently. I think it'll hit like the high 20s Celsius this week. And 
In terms of the health situation in Korea, it's drastically improved. They're actually easing the social distancing rules this week from Wednesday, I believe. Uh, so yeah, people are still wearing masks around, but um, people are more out and about and they're really uh, ready to get out of their house after being um, socially distanced for, I think it's been like three or four months, maybe longer now. And our language schools are open, so you can still apply, you can still come study Korean, uh, you can still join the visiting program if you'd like in Hanyang. And that also goes for Lux Korea as well, they are open as well as our university programs. Hello, hello to those still joining on Instagram. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to catch up on the previous 30 minutes, then feel free to scroll back on Instagram or you can join the replay on YouTube or Facebook later. And let's see. I think I'll just give some more reminders about our upcoming live streams too. Uh, next week we'll have a live stream in Spanish. I know uh, many of you join uh, the Spanish live streams as well. So if you wanna catch another one in Spanish, that will be Monday, May 11th at 5 p.m. Korean time. And then uh, going back to English, we'll have one Monday, May 17th at 10.30 a.m. Korean time. That will be with Hanyang Korean language school staff. So you may have caught our other live stream with Hanyang University's visiting, visiting program staff member. And now we'll talk to their language school staff. And we have uh, other partners as well. You may have caught our live stream with the uh, Dongguk University uh, staff member, the other, our other live stream previously. Uh, hello on YouTube. Um, we're not partnered with uh, Chungang University, so I, I don't have any comment regarding them. Um, if you're interested in one of our language school partners, uh, you can ask me and I'll definitely get back to you with more details. You can see uh, in Seoul, we're partnered with Gongguk University, Dongguk University, Hanyang University, and Lexus Korea. And Lexus Korea is a private academy. And let's see, other reminders. We have our deadlines that are coming up for the fall term. Uh, most schools have their deadline during June or July, if you want to start in the fall. And that's for all of our schools, except for Lexus Korea, which has the rolling admission, as I mentioned earlier. With Lexus Korea, you can start any Monday. So if you apply, then uh, we'll get back to you and get you an invoice for the tuition and you pay and you're, you're good to go. Uh, we do recommend applying as uh, early as possible though, so we can answer all your questions and make sure all your documents and your application are good to go. Uh, other deadlines for study trips, our study trips are still open. And actually I wanted to mention, uh, if, you're st if you're stuck with me until now, uh, we just, launched uh, gift cards for study trips. So there's a huge discount going on. You can use the gift card later. You don't have to use it uh, right now. Uh, if you buy one before May 31st, uh, you can receive a huge savings. If you go to studytrip.com, there's a big banner on the front and you can learn more about the studytrip.com gift cards. So be sure to check that out. If you don't have much time to study, maybe only a couple weeks, the study trips are a great way to enjoy Korea and study Korean and meet others from all over the world. So yeah, thanks for to those that stuck around uh, until now. I meant to mention the study trip gift cards earlier, uh, but if you've stuck around until now, then you've got that extra tidbit of information Uh, let's see, I have another question on YouTube. 
Uh, if you have a group of friends that want to join together, uh, thanks, Daniel, for the question again. That's perfectly fine. Uh, if you'd like to do a short-term study at Lexus Korea, or if you'd like to do a study trip together, that's that's great. Uh, you can contact us and maybe let us know a little bit about your group. Uh, like when you'd want to study, uh, would you like to be housed together? Um, you know, what your budget would be, things like that. Uh, if you do Lexus Korea, then it's pretty flexible. So um, just let us know and we'll get back to you with more details. For large, if you are in a, a group and you said there may be like five of you, um, you probably would have to individually send us some information, um, but otherwise, if you wanted to like uh, live in the similar accommodations or the same accommodation, or if you wanted to be in the same class, like let's say you're all the same level, you all know that you're maybe beginners or you all know you're intermediate, then, then we can work with you for that. Lexus Korea also gives you a placement test. So uh, if you wanted to take the placement test a little early and figure out you know, what level you, you all would be, that's also fine. Hello, I'm doing well, mv.90. Thanks for asking. If you'd like to do a group of you for a study trip, then that's also okay. Uh, we can, of course, get more details about your group and when you'd like to come, and we can uh, put something together for you. Some people ask for the Korean language programs, if you get to do other activities besides just study, and the answer basically is yes. Uh, some schools do like maybe one cultural activity or field trip per term. Uh, somewhere like Lexus Korea, they have a couple different activities throughout the month. So you can, of course, go study and hang out with your classmates and then join other activities they host as well. So even if you join one of our study trips, uh, which includes the language courses at Lexus Korea, you can join the Lexus Korea activities in addition to the study trip activities. I hope I answered your question, Daniel, about large groups. Again, if you have more detailed uh, questions, just, just let us know. And let's see, any other questions I missed? I don't think so, just let me check Instagram here. Thanks again for joining us. Again, my name's Nathan, I'm the International Student Coordinator for Google Hangul. You can leave your Questions, comments about living and studying in Korea, I will answer them now by for you. And as you know, the Instagram live video disappears after a while, so catch the replay on YouTube or Facebook. If you're wondering about traveling to Korea, uh, in terms of inside Korea, it's relatively safe now. There aren't that many cases of COVID-19 going around. Most are imported from people traveling to Korea from other countries. Um, some people ask about the quarantine situation. Uh, while that's still in effect, we hope it will be reevaluated later this month and maybe eased a little bit. Uh, since even the imported cases are relatively low, like maybe less than 10 per day. Uh, let's see. Uh, you're very welcome, Daniel. If you're planning on coming uh, during like, May or June, then yeah, just let us know more details as you as you figure them out, or we can we can help you plan. You're very welcome. And that would May or June would be a pretty good time to visit. Uh, it's not too hot yet. It is warm, uh, the sun is out. So uh, you won't be sweating too much. <laughs> Although I did see that, oh yeah, next year's great too. The sooner the better. 
I did see that um, some people predicted that the summer of 2020 would be like the warmest on record, but I feel like they say that every year. And if you'd like to come in 2021, then that's perfectly fine. You can send us any questions you have now. You can even uh, apply if you'd like in advance, then that's perfectly fine. A lot of documents for 2021 uh, won't actually be due till, till later in 2021, but you're more than welcome to send a, a contact form or an application form in advance, and then we can walk you through the process uh, nice and easy. Uh, some people also ask about the mask situation in Korea. Um, they're actually pretty readily available now. Like if you're registered for national health insurance in Korea, uh, even foreigners, you can buy now three masks per week. And I just walked into a pharmacy uh, right before this and they still had plenty. So the mask supply is kind of stabilized. Um, there are other stores selling masks as well. Um, even some Daisos or convenience stores and such. So the supply is more or less stabilized, um, but the government is still offering the subsidized ones. And I'm thinking they're going to continue doing that as long as you know the, the risk is there, even though the risk is very low. So yeah, mass supply is stabilized. Um, I know in many other parts of the world, it's still difficult to find them. So uh, be safe, be healthy wherever you are. Um, if you're still doing social distancing or stay at home order or quarantine, any of those things, then please uh, be sure to stick to those rules and we'll get through this eventually. Hello, hello to those that just joined the Instagram live video. If you have any questions about living in Sabine in Korea, please drop them in the comments or contact us. We are approaching 45 minutes, I believe. If there's not anything, any other questions you have, I will probably continue the live stream for a couple more minutes. And then uh, again, feel free to drop us a comment or contact us using the contact form on our homepage. Uh, another great question, how easy is it to travel between Seoul and Busan? Uh, it is very easy. You can take a train, you can take a bus. Uh, if you're able to, you can rent a car and drive there. Uh, most people probably take the KTX, which is the, the, fast, the fastest train system in Korea. Uh, the cost is about 60, between 60 and 70,000 won, which is um, maybe 50 to 60 US dollars uh, one way. So a round trip ticket would be double that. And um, you can also take a bus if you'd like. The bus is a little bit cheaper. Uh, however, I recommend the train. I believe the ride is two hours and like 40 minutes, two hours, 45 minutes or so, one way. And uh, you can take the train, I believe from Seoul Station or Yongsan Station in Seoul. Uh, a couple other stations I believe have stops too. And then, um, most people will get off at Pusan Station in Pusan, and then from there you can take a taxi or you can take another train, the subway connects to Pusan Station, the, the Pusan subway that is. So you can take the subway or you can hop on another bus. So it's quite convenient. Uh, you don't have to buy the tickets in advance. Most of the time there are tickets available even the day of, although a lot of people do buy them in advance just to make sure they have a seat. If you're in a real pinch, you can do standing room. Um, if you need to like catch the train at the last minute, you can stand. <laughs> yeah, it's quite convenient. Hello on Instagram. Thanks for joining us. Uh, hello on Facebook. Yes, the transportation system is quite convenient in Korea. Uh, within Seoul, many people use the subway or the bus system. 
and there's still plenty of taxis and they're all relatively inexpensive. If you want to go someplace else in Korea, then there's probably a bus or a train that can take you there uh, for a reasonable amount of money. It's, it's very affordable. Uh, I personally don't own a car. I don't even own a bike. I, I walk or I take public transportation. Um, some people do have a bike or they do own a car or a, a scooter or something like that. But the vast majority of people in the big cities like Seoul and um, Busan, even Daegu, they will probably use public transportation. So again, uh, answering all your questions about living and studying in Korea, we partner with various language schools in Seoul, Busan, and Daegu, as well as a visiting program for undergrads at Hanning University in Seoul. We are Global Hanguk, based in Seoul. And yeah, even with the challenging travel situation going on right now, our language schools are open. They are still accepting applications and students are still studying there. On Facebook system, they also have a bus system. There are various apps for your phone. You can track the buses, you can track the trains, you can track the subway. Uh, you can even see like exactly where the buses are on the routes. You can check the whole route. You can check the traffic. Um, it's very convenient to get around using public transport. If you don't have your, your own form of transportation, if you don't want to spend money on a car or a bike or a scooter or anything like that. Hello, thanks for joining us. Before I moved to Korea, I did own a car and had to drive almost everywhere, but I'm actually I'm happy I don't have to worry about a car and car insurance and all those things, registration and licensing anymore. Uh, another question from YouTube, how common are events uh, like modern culture events or pop culture events, esports, Korean pop, things like that. Um, well, right now they're a little bit limited, but um, if we were in a situation without um, the current health uh, situation going on, I would say they're pretty regular. Um, getting tickets can be challenging, especially to the very popular events or concerts, um, but like there's plenty of sports games that go on like, um, you know, baseball and soccer and volleyball and basketball and things like that. Esports, um, there are some big esports venues. So if you follow like League of Legends, if you follow StarCraft, if you follow Overwatch and, and things like that, there are definitely opportunities to see live matches. Uh, for concerts, for Korean pop, those are very challenging to get tickets, but you can get tickets. Um, they can be very expensive depending where you want to stand or sit. Uh, but there are also things like musicals that are very popular. There's various plays. Um, there's uh, classical music, both like traditional Korean classical music and, you know, orchestras to go see if you'd like. Um, what else? There's other um, traditional performances like uh, Korean drumming or tansori or uh, all sorts of stuff that you can enjoy. So uh, again, some of those venues are very limited now, um, but you know, in normal situation, if we had a normal situation going on, then you know, you can you, you could go to an event, you know, every weekend, every other weekend, if you wanted. Um, I think there's plenty to do. Um, even in other cities, like outside of Seoul, um, like say Busan, there's also you know, plenty of stuff to do. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't miss driving. Like I miss driving sometimes, like maybe once a month, <laughs> but otherwise I don't really miss it. Um, statistically, it's safer to take, you know, the subway or probably even a city bus would be statistically safer. <laughs> 
so yeah, if you're into the the pop culture stuff like um, music or gaming or other things in Korea, then yeah, definitely there's stuff to do. And there's there's free stuff to do as well. You don't have to always pay money. Um, you can go see street performances. Uh, you can go see like other free concerts in, in parks. Um, they screen free movies in parks as well during the summer on like big projection screens near the river in Seoul at least. Um, there's other, you know, local festivals and things like that and, and other markets to enjoy, traditional markets or uh, other street markets that go on when the weather is nice. So you don't have to always spend money. Um, a lot of museums are cheap or they're free. Same thing for palaces and temples. They're either really, really cheap, like a dollar or two, or they're free. So if you're into traditional uh, cultural activities, if you're into pop culture activities, if you're into eating or anything like that, then don't worry, there's, there's definitely something for you. We're approaching an hour now. I believe we're at 50, 50 some minutes. So uh, we'll take this time to kind of wrap up. If you have any other questions about living and studying in Korea, about our, about our partner schools, about the situation in Korea now, then please let me know. Otherwise, we'll talk to you via comments or feel free to contact us using the contact form on our website, gogohanguk.com. Very glad to see participants on all our platforms here. Uh, we do stream on three different platforms on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. So that's why I've been like rotating my head very often throughout this whole hour. Um, hope I'm not making people too seasick. <laughs> if you have a question, I'll, I'll try to talk directly at the platform in which you answer or ask the question so I can answer it for you directly. So thank you very much for the questions on YouTube and on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, question on Facebook, which city is more laid back with uh, less of a city feel? Um, I mean, out of the three cities we have language schools, I would definitely say Daegu is much smaller population wise and it's got maybe a less of a city feel. Uh, the population of Daegu is, is much smaller than Seoul. Uh, I'm not sure about the numbers right now, but yeah, if you want somewhere that's a little bit more quieter, then I would pick Daegu. Uh, for those who don't know, my name's Nathan. I'm the International Student Coordinator at Kobo Hangu. So yeah, if, and even if you do decide to study in Busan or you decide to study in Seoul, you don't have to live in like the center of the city necessarily. Um, there's a whole province around Seoul, which you could commute in from if you, if you really wanted. And there's very like residential quiet areas where, you know, you'd only see housing and you know, your local supermarket and such. You, you don't have to be in the middle of it all. A uh, question on YouTube, how much money would you need to save to study for your language school? So if you want to study for your language school, uh, we recommend that you have at least like 10, 000, the equivalent of 10,000 US dollars to start. That's to get the visa sponsorship because uh, most likely you need visa sponsorship if you study that long. Um, and then it really depends on your spending habits. Um, I would say anywhere from like 15 to 20,000 US dollars for a year. Uh, it really depends on like where you, like where you live, where you study, um, what your spending habits are like, you know, are you gonna shop a lot? Are you gonna travel a lot? Uh, but if you have any more specific budget questions then, then just let me know. You're very welcome. Over back on Facebook. I believe we will wrap it up very soon. Uh, again, I've been Nathan here in Seoul, Korea.
the weather is warm and uh, if you have any other questions, then you can of course, of course join our other live streams or you can leave them in comments, we'll get back to you or you can contact us via our contact form. That's the best way to get a hold of us, gogohanguk.com. If you speak English, it's gogohanguk.com slash en slash pound sign or hashtag contact form. But if you just scroll down on our homepage, you can find it. Uh, you can email us. However, the contact form gives us a lot more information and we can answer you much quicker that way. Our email address is info at gogohanguk.com. So again, uh, live stream next week will be in Spanish. Then live stream in two weeks, we'll be back uh, with English again. So if you'd like to catch the live stream in Spanish, be sure to tune in next week on Monday, May 11th at 5 p.m. Korean time and then May 17th at 10.30 a.m. Korean time. I believe I have covered all the outstanding questions, so I will wrap it up here and say goodbye for now. Um, be sure to join the live stream every week. Normally it's on Monday. Uh, if it's another day or uh, we decide to change it, we'll of course let you know. And Hope you all have a good day or evening or night, wherever you are. For Korea, it is approaching evening. It's almost 5.30 p.m. and it's still light outside. Uh, the sun will set maybe in two hours or so. So thank you very much for joining us everywhere on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.